Hello and welcome to Hokkaido! As we kick off our new journey here in Japan, we are of course playing as Hokkaido Consadol Sapporo have hired May. Yes, they have hired, they've confirmed the appointment of Best in Management. Yes, BIM, of course, May as the club's new manager. Eyebrows have been raised in the world of football at the appointment of the 56 year old who has recently spent time away from club football. I bet you can't guess what BIM has been doing. But, and he is sure to face plenty of questions when he faces the media for the first time at Sapporo Dome. May has put pen to paper on a one year deal worth 3.9 thousand per week. He replaces previous manager, Mi Hajlo Petrovic. Now, a little bit less than Mr. Bim May is used to having, but whereabout is Hokkaido? And more specifically, whereabouts is Sapporo in Hokkaido? Well, as you can tell from this helpful little map of Asia, or more specifically Japan, China and Korea, with a little bit of Mongolia and Russia thrown in, it's over in the northern section of Japan. So, as you can see, there is this lovely big island up on top of Japan, and that is in fact Hokkaido, for those who are not geographically used to Japan. In terms of Sapporo though, more specifically, Sapporo is here on the western southern side of Hokkaido, and is quite the size. So, as you can see, this is where our club is located. A little bit far from the coast, it would have been better in Ataru if we wanted to be more coastal, but nice lovely place. We'll have a little look around here in just a second, but let's head on back in. Have a look at our contract and see what the board wants from us as a manager. Okay, so Mr. Wahoo! Yoshi, not the one from Mario, but Yoshi Kazu Nonno Mura is here to welcome us. He is, of course, the chairman of the club. And, well, we are a two and a half star reputation team and the media predicts us down in 13th. I think we are going to do a little bit better than that. Director of football, we have one and we even have an assistant manager. So, nice established club here. We have Hiro Katsu Mikami as our director of football and an assistant manager in Shuhai Yomoda. In terms of the club's history, as you can see, we have quite a few titles to our name. But first of all, we're going to have a look at the facilities. So we have a 41,484 capacity stadium built in 2001. So it's nice and reasonably modern. We then have great training facilities, great youth facilities and excellent youth recruitment. That's going to be great going forward. In terms of the upcoming season, well, last season we finished 12th in J League 1. They're expecting us to drop down a place, so they're not very confident in our ability to maintain that 12th place, which is a bit worrying. But in the Emperor's Cup, we enter at the second round. And, well, in terms of the club history, well, we've won the J-League three times, 2000, 2007 and 2016. We're not going to read through the background if you specifically want to read through the specifics of that feel free to pause and do so in terms of the japan football league though we won that in 97 we won the japan regional kanto league division one 1977 we then won the japanese national shaka ijin soccer championship in 1977 we've also won the japanese soccer league division two 1979 and 1989 the Japanese Soccer Division, Division 2, Eastern Bloc, 1987, 1988 and 1989. They really should give some of these championships shorter names. And the Japanese Kanto Senior Soccer Tournament of 1976. So that is our club cabinet. What about the rest? Well, as you can see, we go for a very interesting formation. I have not looked at any of this, so this is all new to me as well. We're going for a 5 2 2 1. I think we're going to make it a bit more European. I'm not so keen on this. Maybe the five at the back we could possibly keep with, but the two midfielders with the two attacking mids and the one striker, I am not keen at all with that. I would rather shift them out to the wings if we're going to do this, or maybe have one with two strikers. I don't like the 2 2 bit. The 2 2 bit just seems a bit weird to me, to be honest. So we're not going to keep that formation. Like I said, we might keep some aspects, but not all of it. 
as you can see, on loan these two players. Oh, okay, all five of these are out, I believe. Yes. So on loan to arrange these, any good. So we have this guy who is at Brisbane, of all places. Okay, so he's two star, three and a half, potentially four and a half, 19 year old Japanese winger. So we could bring him back and use him on the wing. He's two star. He is three star, three star potential. So he's solid. He's a wing back left 25. We are, of course, going to have a look at who we've got and what we can utilize there. Another good youngster, 21 year old Ai Wasaki. He's two and a half star, three and a half star, potentially four and a half star. Lovely physicals. The great thing about this save as well, we're not going to have to worry about aggression. So I can get some nice youngsters in without worrying about trying to limit myself to a minimum aggression in this save. We are just going to enjoy Japan and the beauty of this lovely country. In terms of other players though, we've got a 20 year old striker. He's good. Two star, three and a half star, four and a half star again potential these all developing out at our other teams right now but he's a solid striker for the future and then the 21 year old center back he's not so good two star two potentially three we could do with getting rid of him to be honest he's never going to make it i'm sorry hammer but you are never going to make it in my team because you just don't have enough potential Simple as that. You don't have the potential to make it into our team. In terms of the club culture, the five-year plan, etc. Work within the wage budget, we always do that. Sign players to sell on for a profit. Well, we're probably going to... We're not intentionally going to do that, but unintentionally we'll probably end up doing that. Because I like to buy younger players, so they end up being worth more anyways. End of the current season, we have mid-table of the J-League. Emperor's Cup. Fifth round minimum, J League reach first round minimum. Uh, best in management, BIMS contract ends. So this doesn't really matter because our contract ends at the current season. But we should get a new contract season two. And then we can try and go for a top par and challenge for the league in season three. We're going to try and accelerate that. I think we should aim for top half this season. We'll try and push on top five or six maybe here not necessarily challenge for the title but make a push up the league and then maybe this season we will be challenging for the title so i've got slightly loftier ambitions in terms of the introductions well it's automatically sent me the tactical introduction don't need any of these sent really so we are just gonna skip ahead i guess so schedule a press conference to meet the media i guess i can do that i will do that on my own time though you don't really need to sit through the default media briefing at the start arrange an inter-friendly to assess the players nope we're going to assess them against external teams send an advice report you know what yeah why not send that to us so we have been hired i will go through some of this messy stuff in the introduction and then we shall have a little look around Sapporo. Okay, so welcome back to our helpful little map of Sapporo. And the first couple of things I would like to look at are what this market actually shows. And then, of course, the Sapporo Dome, which we shall be playing in. So this particular market for our club is right here. What is here? Well, it's the Mishwa White Lovers Football Stadium. Mm, the Lovers. So if you are a lover and you are in Japan... This is the place to go. Come watch some football. We also have a nice little restaurant here at the Lovers. Maybe it's a very romantic restaurant. What is on this dot? Let's find out. Well, this is quite a beautiful location, don't you think? Not a bad little spot for our ground. As you can see, it's just over this fence here. So it's just through there is where I'm assuming that's our youth pitch because of course we do play in the dome for our main games the 40 odd thousand so I guess this is where we train and our youth team etc plays which as you can see besides the fact that look at that even the lamppost has our badge on it but besides the fact that someone can just stand on the pavement and watch it's rather beautiful we've got a nice little mountainside very lovely spot to have a football ground and well 
I think anyone would be happy playing that because it is lovely nice to play now in terms of the dome what can we see also look lovely park we're not going to click on everything in this episode because we don't want it to go on too long we do of course have to have a little look through the team and try and figure out what our formation is going to be and that is of course what we're going to do next but i want to take a little bit of a look in Sapporo. we're going to have a little better look in future episodes but for now we want to check out our main ground and our youth ground so we are going to go here this is our main one and we can have a proper look in it so let's drop down here this is of course when it's for baseball so nice internal and very big and round i don't think we're going to be playing on a round pitch because that would not be the best of ideas so i guess it's sectioned off when we play can we get an image of when it's a football pitch not a baseball pitch perhaps hmm that's not what we want maybe we just hover over and find the one we are after yeah i'm not sure what that's about supposed to be why we're we looking at an escalator through glass no idea but this is where we shall be playing when there's not baseball going on apparently so nope we've got baseball again i apologize one of these has to not be baseball surely can we can we see it with soccer can we see soccer ball can we see the soccer balls I guess we're not allowed to see the soccer balls. What about if we go into the stand? Can we see it from up top? Perhaps it's just going to give us baseball. Okay, so we're just going to see baseball. As you can see though, nice courtyard area up here. We can get a little bit to eat, enjoy the view from up here. And it's got a lovely bit of seating around the side. So that is what our main stadium is going to be like besides of course we're not going to be playing baseball we're going to be playing football so let's head on back into football manager 21 and have a look through our squad okay so before we decide on a tactic and arrange the plays we need to have a little look at our finances because we are of course going to find some holes in the team that we're going to have to fill so first of all our overall budget is uh, sorry, balance is 6,153,757 on the back of 13 million of profit. Mm. I mean, it's about half, just under, admittedly. And 100% of transfer revenue will be retained up until 67. Yeah, I can't see us making 67.76 million revenue anytime soon, where it will drop to 60. We're going to get a minimum of 3.85 next season, but right now we have 980,140. Now, to put that in some sort of context, because this is the Japanese League, and like me, a lot of you probably don't have any idea what that is relative to the rest of the League, except I have seen this, and, well, they managed to... Hmm. They've just got 3.7 million. 3.7 million is the top transfer followed by a freebie admittedly but 1.8 so we're half of the third place one well, the most active team has currently got two players i think that's probably going to be us by the time the end of the transfer window has happened if i didn't look at our wage budget okay right our wage budget isn't great 76,642 out of 76,400 we're getting rid of our transfer budget I'm telling you that right now. It doesn't matter who we bring in. We are swapping this to wage budget. We're going to have £44 in terms of our transfer budget. That is our wage budget. In fact, I might even change the currency. I might. If I'm feeling spicy, I might change the currency. Make it a little bit more regional. Or I might just leave it at pounds. Pounds is easier to follow. I don't know. If you have a suggestion, please feel free to leave it down below in the comments. And I will probably do what your suggestion says because i really don't care which way it's going to confuse the heck out of me probably changing it to yen but we can do that for a little bit of fun if you would like anyways let's head over to the squad screen and see what we've got we are of course going to skip over that because we want to see where our ability lies so our best three players two are brazilian one is thai 
that's a good point. What do we have in terms of rules for the Miji Yasuda J1 League? Or as I just call it, the J1 League. As you can see, the names are corrected. We don't have any badges, unfortunately, but I did manage to get the names corrected, which is a good sign. In terms of the season preview, as you know, we are expected to finish 13, so we don't need to go over that. Money... Top of league gets 12.6 million, 5.6, 2.9. That's a massive drop off from there to there and there to there. And then 1.2. Very big drop off. And then, yeah, two teams getting relegated, one in the relegation playoff. So potentially three relegated teams. But what do we have in terms of foreign player rules? Discipline, that's not too much of an issue. In fact, how many substitutes do we get? Okay. Squad registration, maximum of five foreign players. Maximum squad size of 25 players. That's not too much of an issue because I like to keep a small squad anyways. Transfer windows, we have a couple and a freebie one. Emergency goalkeepers can be signed at any time during the season. So that's not too much of an issue. Although you don't really want to risk that in terms of loaning a keeper in. Hmm. So maximum five foreign players. How many do we have currently? That's the question. Because our best three players are foreign players. Okay, we have five. We have more than five. We have three Brazilians, one that's English, and a Nigerian, a Korean, and one that's Thai. Okay. Why do we have seven? Is our... Are we crazy? We can only register four of these players. We have seven. So, there's definitely going to be some departures, because I'm not holding seven players when we can only have four foreign players. So, that is the first thing. We need to clear out our foreign players. And the first step is seeing who's actually any good. So, the first lot, it's going to be these three. So, who is our worst foreign player? Our worst foreign player is the very old Jay Boothroyd. This man... Used to be good at football. Now he's a little bit old and he's gone to Japan. He's also earning five and a half grand. Who is paying? Well, we know who is paying five and a half grand to Jay Boothroyd as an impact sub. I don't know why. He's got one England cap and a one under 21 cap. Those who don't know who Jay Boothroyd is. Yeah, this is his history. Spent a little bit of time at Arsenal. Didn't do anything. Went to Coventry. Was okay at Coventry. Went to Italy for a little bit, went on loan to Blackburn, where he scored one goal in 11 games. He then went back to Italy before returning to Charlton in the Premier League. Yes, Charlton in the Premier League. That's how old Jay Boothroyd is. He then went to Wolverhampton Wanderers in the Championship. Now, I would say Wolverhampton Wanderers, Stoke, Cardiff, this sort of area. This was his heyday, especially that last one at Cardiff. He then fell off a cliff. Cliff, though, when he went to QPR, getting two goals in 21 games and one goal in four before going to Sheffield and only getting one in 14 on loan. Then he went to Thailand. Didn't realise he went to Thailand, but he did. He got six goals in 16 games. And then he was actually quite good in the second tier of Japanese football, getting 20 goals in 32 games for Iwata. I'll just call him Iwata because I'm not even going to try the first bit. And then he got 14, which is decent, in 22 games. And then 10 in 14 for us, of course, Sapporo. So, he was decent back then, but the past two seasons, nine goals in 23 games and 24 games, it's not good enough. We need to get rid of him. He's old. He's past it. Let's get rid of Jay Boothroyd. That's one of our first steps. As you can see, we've got a few players loaned out. When we get rid of some of these foreign players, we might bring some of our young players back because they're going to have an opportunity to shine especially considering we don't have a whole lot of depth. So, the three that we're definitely going to be keeping are Lucas. Is this Lucas Lucas? Different Lucas. Not the Lucas I'm thinking of. But, a solid Lucas nevertheless. Four star, four star potential. Right footed. As you can see, he's a solid winger. Probably not going to use him on attack. Maybe more on support. He can play at wing back. He can play on both sides. And he can even play as a striker. But, He's probably going to be on this right hand side unless I can find someone else to put over there. We then have Lopez. Now he's a central. That means we're probably going to go for our usual 4-2-3-1. I don't want to do it, but if we have to do it, we'll go for it. Although, striker. 
is what he prefers to be. So we could use him as a striker. A Brazilian striker would be nice for us. 14 finishing. Four star, four star potential. So that's two of our starters. What about you? Where would you prefer? The left hand side. Perfect. Wingers, one up front. We've got some decent backup young Japanese wingers who can come off the bench, develop and build into the team. So this is looking good. We've got wingers sorted. We need to sort out probably the rest of the team, but our wings are probably not where we're going to be spending any money. So nice long shots is an inverted winger. How are you in the center? Hmm. Hmm. I think we'd probably use you as an inside forward. Your anticipation isn't quite there, but inside forward on that side is probably what we're going to do with him. We then have a nice little wing back on the left. Would you be any decent as a complete wing back? You would. I might retrain him to be a defensive left wing back instead of an actual wing back wing back. That might be the way I'll go with him. Although the problem is most Japanese players I believe are wing backs rather than defense backs. And yeah, he's a rare one. So we have someone for the left wing, we have wingers, we have one for left back, we have a striker. What about you? So you're on the right side. Can you drop back to being a complete wing back? Again, I could do the same thing with this guy. He's got the attributes to be able to play as a complete wing back. He's not quite learnt the position yet, but when they get used to playing a bit further back, this should be okay. And they're going to just be on support anyway, so they're going to be bombing forward. And his aggression, Jesus, he's going to break someone's leg. I know it. Yoshiaki Kumai is probably going to break a guy's leg. Three star, uh, three and a half star, three and a half star potential. So, decent wingers, decent wing backs. How are we in central midfield and how are we in central defense? So, this guy's on the wing back. He's our central midfielder. Are you going to be a playmaker? It looks like he's probably our playmaker. He's got good coverage. He can cover the entire midfield, basically, and central defense as well. Aging a little bit at 30, but is a solid little player. Kim, he's a defensive mid. We're probably not going to use a Segunto Volante, although I'm kind of tempted to use it, although his six finishing and other attributes are a little bit questionable for using him for that specific role what about a ball winning midfielder would you be any good at that you know what he might make a decent ball winning midfielder so we might use the south korean as a ball winning midfielder although he does again go into our foreign player rule that's our winger that guy is probably going to have to be our backup now where would you play hmm. okay he would be a backup on the left back we'd have to train him to be defensive left we're gonna have a lot of repositioning i think of players we're going to definitely go more european defensive left instead of wing backs and yeah we're definitely going to alter the japanese approach in terms of our specific club anyways and there is one of our center backs he is solid i'm happy with him goalkeeper and center back is probably Okay, we've got another decent centre-back. He's three-star. This guy's a ball-playing defender as well. We'll use him on defensive. He'll be okay. So we've got a couple of defenders. Goalkeeper. Okay, goalkeeper, 20 years old, two and a half star. Is he... Do we have anyone with potential? Do we have to put a youngster in with potential? Okay, he's the nearest one to potential. We've got this old man at 35 who's going to be on his way out at some point. He's 30 years old and he's useless and he's 24 and also pretty useless and the great thing is he's wanted so we could perhaps get him out on loan get some of this wage budget down and use that money elsewhere speaking of said money we've now got 18 grand of wage so we'll see what freebies we can get here in Japan and well that is going to be our team so I am going to quickly set up our team as far as it currently is and i'll see you fine folks in just a second okay everyone i picked out our final team to start off the season so as you can see naka kano the young goalkeeper is going to be starting Su sujeno 
even, is the guy on the bench. Now, this guy is a little bit old. He's 35 years of age, two and a half star, two and a half star potential. He was our main goalkeeper last season, I believe. No, no idea who our goalkeeper was last season. He had one appearance on loan. So I guess we got rid of whoever was our main goalkeeper because Naka Kano is two and a half star, two and a half star, potentially three and a half star, only 20 years of age. We're using him because basically he's got more opportunity to develop and heck, we can sell him on afterwards. But as you can see, never played a game in his life. So that's going to be rather interesting. He's going to be in goal. We've then got a back line of Tanaka, Fuku, Mori, Yanagi on the left hand side is going to be Suga, Komai on the right in central midfield, Kim, Mi, Tai, Mi, Yazawa on the left hand side, Song Krasin on the left, uh, right even, Lucas, and up front is Anderson Lopez. A couple of easy ones to say further up the pitch. Our bench for now is Sugeno. We need to get another backup right wing. As you can see, we also need a backup left wing. Our backup centre backs are Takamine, Okamura, Nakamura. Fukai is going to be our backup for the right hand side. So for our playmaker, we then have Arano. As you can see, he can play wing back right, but he's mainly a midfield centre as far as I'm aware. So Arano is going to be our backup for Kimmy Tai. We then have this guy, again, a lot of these are very versatile. So we have Arako. He's actually able to play in quite a lot of spots, but he's going to be our backup on the right-hand side of midfield. 23 years of age, got plenty of time to develop. But on the other end of the spectrum, we have Ono. Now, if you don't know who Ono is, he is quite the legend. He's only valued at 25,500 at the moment, 800 odd pound a week. Bargain for a 56 cap, 6 goal legend of Japan. He is now 40, but this man is a mythical legend in Japanese football. As you can see, he spent a good time at Red Diamond, had a few solid games, but he then went and shone over in Feyenoord before returning back to the Japanese league for a couple of seasons. He then went to Germany for three seasons and then back to Japan, yes, he always seems to return home, then headed to Australia, decided to enjoy Australia for a couple of seasons, and then came back home yet again. So, he's back here in Sapporo after a couple of seasons in Ryoku, and, well, he's here to stay now. So, he's going to play out the rest of his career. Don't know if that's going to be two years, five years, one year, what? He's 40 years of age. He wasn't, to be honest, my chosen backup, because he's actually on here as... A central attacking mid just to give us an option in this slot if we decide to say take a defender out put them up there and go to our usual formation drop these back but he's not bad it's basically because we couldn't get Iwasaki Iwasaki is my chosen backup for this said well backup only option for this central attacking mid but unfortunately we cannot recall him from his loan so the 21 year old is currently stuck in Chiba at the moment so that is the situation with him as you can see Jay Boo Freud he's foreign he's going to be on his way out same with Duglau and Oki Chukwu as much as I would like to have one of these as a backup we only can have four foreign players so we are going to get rid of all three of those and I might if I can find a way of getting a replacement Try and shove out one of these as well but as you can see they are part of our main core so we're probably stuck with these for at least for the foreseeable future so that is how our team looks going into the start of the season i'm of course going to look for a couple of wing backs and if i can get some other players in then great but we really need to sort out some of these because i literally don't have anyone i can put in there at the moment unless they're in the youth squad and I'm not going to dig in the youth squad for backup wingbacks. So that is our team going forward. As you can see, the first game of the season is until the 22nd of February, where we'll be taking on FC Tokyo over in Tokyo. So that will be the game that we play in the next episode when we kick off the season. After that, I'm not quite sure where we go. We should really have a little look 
at who the top teams are in this league. So Kawasaki, um, should we really look at the top ones or should we mix it up a little bit? I think we should mix it up a little bit. So if we go to Ipitokiyo, then Shimizu, Shimizu S plus, where are they in the rankings? We should get a nice little range in there. Shimizu are about our sort of level. And by then we should also have a few players as well. So I think what we'll do is we'll go for Tokyo and then maybe Shimizu in the next one. Unless we have a mixture of the fixtures. Although there is a cup competition. We are in the J League Cup Group D. So maybe we'll come back for that. Although there is quite a few games in that. So perhaps we can skip over Osaka. I uh, I'm sorry, Osaka, but I think we can skip over you. And I think we can probably come back for Nagasaki for the cup. And maybe that will be our next one after Pulse. Yeah, I think Tokyo, Pulse and Nagasaki will be our next three episodes. But I thank you all for joining us. We also have an Emperor Cup second round, which is coming in here. But that's besides the point. I thank you all for joining us. For this little club introduction, I apologise there wasn't any games in this episode, but I don't want them to be too long, these episodes. So, I thank you all for watching. Be sure to tune in to the next episode, where we will take on Tokyo in our first league game of the season. I thank you all for watching. I hope you have a lovely night, and goodbye.